Welcome, my friends. This week, I've been having a ton of fun playing through the Fast Wrecker amp model. This is a, sort of a take on a train wreck that Cliff Chase put together. Uh, he described the old one as sort of a fizzy, spitty amp um, that has, you know, some not so pleasant qualities to it. And he's refined the amp and turned it into something uh, that I think is a beautiful masterpiece. And it's so strange to me that I rarely hear people talking about these fast amps. And more and more, I'm discovering this is uh, where some of the most fun is to be had, in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of great models, of course, and I'm trying to chase them down and put together videos of, of things that will kind of shortcut you guys into getting the tone of your dreams, so to speak. Uh, but this one surprised me. It's um, I didn't expect to have so much fun. And the problem with this video is every time I pick up and start playing it, I'm seeing the time go by because I've, I've been playing so much without committing anything to this video. So uh, this is something I've been working on for at least a few days and I'm stopping, I'm committing to whatever this happens to be. So thanks for being here and checking it out. Uh, you heard me playing uh, the Fast Wrecker with a basket weave cabinet, some delay, um, a little bit of compression, and not much else. So I'm going to talk you through how to get that kind of a sound in just a minute. But I do want you to hear this setup, this preset that I've dialed in with just my guitar and no backing track. And that's what I've got going here now. <laughs> Pretty nice, pretty smooth. And then I'm gonna flip over to some of the other pickup positions so you can hear how that's gonna affect the tone. One thing I want to show you is just how responsive it is when you lower the volume just a little bit. Um, check this out. I'm going to go over to my uh, position four and let's see how it does the mayor kind of a thing. Not too shabby. Position two. And the bridge, this is almost gonna be like uh, hitting an overdrive switch because my humbucker has a lot more power, but here it is. Staying for days, I love it. So let's dive into Axe Edit. I'll show you how I set this thing up and you can dial into your tastes. Okay, I'm gonna start with the amp block and you can see some of these modifications I've made in the, the drive, bass, mid, treble, etc. cetera. Uh, all of these things default at five. And first thing I did to make this uh, work a little better for my Strat kind of guitar is to take the bright switch out completely. Um, that can be very nice and I want to encourage you to give that a try and see how it works for your guitar because for a humbucker instrument that might work really nice. Maybe a Les Paul or something else of that flavor. Um, you get a lot of attack with that bright switch and sometimes you can find a nice compromise by turning the treble or the presence down or another thing I tend to do on a lot of these amps is go into the ideal tab and I'll turn the high treble down but in this case I didn't do that I just turned the bright switch off uh, presence up slightly 5.75 treble way up about eight right there uh, mids down a little bit I found this to be a pretty mid heavy amp and that's kind of where I like it 
bass is really going to depend on what pickup you're on, um, what speakers you're using. Of course, all of these things are a factor, but I like to start right around three and see how that plays out. Uh, I spend a lot of time on my neck uh, single coil. And so I'm always very conscious of things getting a little bit too tubby in the bottom end or, or too undefined. And I like this sound right here, the bass 2.95. Uh, drive is just a smidge down. I think that was probably just an accident. So you could leave it at five. And here's a real magical feature I've mentioned in previous videos is that input trim is a really powerful control in um, dialing in the gain that you find inspiration from. Uh, you might find that at the default setting it's good but maybe just a little too saturated sometimes in certain amps and by turning that down you kind of get to keep the feel of whatever you've got dialed in with the drive there at uh, whatever it is and the various EQ things. It retains its character is what I'm trying to say. As you bring that input trim down the character doesn't change. It just lowers the gain totally. So Next up from there, I want to show you, I've got uh, a couple more things here in the output EQ, just some real nitpicky stuff as usual, as you can come to expect from me <laughs> at this point. Uh, 125, I've dipped that by two or so, and 250, I've dipped that by 1.5. 250 is a funny thing for guitar tones. What I've noticed is it can really overwhelm a mix to have too much 250 in your guitar and conversely if you take it out it can make the guitar sound really weak and uh, not very powerful so you got to find that sweet spot for your guitar and your setup but i would play with that and see if you can find that balance between power and not overwhelming other instruments you might be playing with uh, last thing i've got the dynamics tab uh, my go-to setting for the gain enhancer is 1.2 on the out compression lowering the threshold a bit uh, so 35.5 and that's it. Everything else is stock. Moving over, the compressor is something that really helps to give that snap to the sound. I'm always looking for a snappy uh, sound with a lot of definition, clarity, articulation is another way of putting it. Uh, here I backed off the threshold just a hair, so just about minus 50. Uh, everything else here is stock. So I didn't change the compression ratio, the tack release or anything else. I did boost the level a bit and I like to do the kind of uh, Andy Timmons thing where you put the compressor in front of the amp and you boost the level a little bit and you get kind of uh, hitting the, the front end of the amp harder kind of increases the drive and sustain a little bit. So here's an odd one and I've used this on a previous preset where I was dealing with the uh, Friedman amps but this is something I've sort of become addicted to and, and there is something to it but it might be a little bit in my head. Uh, in any case it is a PEQ, and what's going on here is I've got the gain in the lower mid frequency at 450 uh, attached to the pitch follower. And so what's going on is as I play lower, let's see what this does. I'm gonna be on my neck pickup here, and I'm gonna start low, I'll just play a pentatonic scale. <laughs> So what you can see it doing there is as I climb higher into my higher regions of the fretboard, it's increasing that low mid-range frequency. And I love this sound because it's giving a fatness to the notes where sometimes certain settings can sound nice on the low end, at the bottom end, it, you know, it's right where you need it to be. But then when you get to the high strings, it feels like, man, something's missing. It's not quite powerful enough, doesn't have as much weight. This is a way of combating that feeling. If you've ever felt that, especially if you use in-ear monitors, you might just feel like, yeah, you know, it sounds great in front of the speakers, but when I put my monitors in, it just sounds thin and tinny and not very exciting. Well, that is a great way of combating that problem. Try it, see if it works for you. But right after the amp, I've got the gate. Um, this is what it sounds like without it. I'm not sure if this is gonna come across on a YouTube video, but, I'm getting a healthy amount of buzz there and I've just taken that out by using the downward expander after the amp block, side chain to input one. And for me, for my guitar, right around 72 is where I get a good balance between not having too much noise and uh, still having a healthy amount of sustain without that getting killed by the gate. Cab, nothing fancy here except for we got a four by 12 basket weave TV mix. And this is gonna be uh, legacy number 103. I turn the low cut up to 80 hertz, and that's all. Um, 
delay, I like a dual delay. And what I always do when I'm using my dual delay is it's gonna be an eighth note on one side and a quarter note on the other. I add a little bit of modulation there, um, about 21.9, and I turn the LFO depth range up to high. Um, one more tweak that I like to do on the delay is to bring the highs down. So I've got mine at 3.3K uh, uh, or so. Um, again, try it, see how it works for you. If you like a really pronounced repeat, uh, you can leave that higher. If you want those to be a little bit more subtle, try bringing that down. You can even bring it as low as uh, 1K. It's really gonna chop it off and make it kind of blend in. You don't hear the repeats as much. Uh, of course, other things that you can tweak now, there's a compounder or a compander. So uh, that's a really cool feature to play around with and see how it affects the, the grittiness or the, um, the sounds of the repeats. In this tab, you can see that I've got the ducker activated. Um, it's supplying a healthy amount of attenuation, so it's bringing my, my repeats down so that they don't clutter up too much on what I'm playing. So I'm bringing it down about eight decibels. Uh, threshold at, you know, about minus 45, minus 40 is a good place for me. That's where I like it, kind of sneaks in right after I play a line. And the release time, 100 milliseconds. I think that's a pretty good stock setting. I've got the mix higher than I normally would on the delay. Uh, but because I'm using the ducker, it kind of works out and it brings it in, fades it in in a nice way. Last but certainly not least, we've got the South Church reverb in the mix here. So only thing I did was lower this to a 2.75 second time of decay. Uh, mix is just under 20% and the stereo spread I increased to 100. I think it defaults at 95. So that's the gist of it. Let me know how this works for you and uh, I'll do a little more playing so you can hear what this thing has to offer. One more thing I gotta touch on is what happens when you throw a drive in front of this. I experimented with a lot of different drive pedals, but the ones that I kept coming back to were the Shimmer Drive and the BB Preamp. So let me show you what that sounds like when I stick the drive in front. I turn the compressor off when I'm dealing with the drive. So now here's what I get. Crazy. It's just a really fun sound. Uh, I, again, I'm surprised by the articulation. You know, when you throw a bunch of distortion into an amp, oftentimes it just becomes kind of non-distinct. It can get lost in a mix, etc. But, you know, that's not the case with this Wrecker and BB combination. Uh, I should tell you that I kept the drive pretty low here. Uh, three on the gain. I didn't mess with any other, uh, you know, EQ settings here at levels at default five, um, but a really cool sound. Um, that's what it sounded like with my neck pickup. Here's a little bit with the bridge. Beautiful sound, lots of articulation, works equally well on humbuckers or single coils. You gotta try this out, get your hands on this and let me know how it goes. I'm curious if you're gonna have as much fun with this as I am. Uh, let me know if there's questions that I can answer about this particular model. And by all means, let me know what you wanna see in the future. I appreciate you being here. See you next time.